So the ground back is the South African sparkling. Um, it's got very nice floral hints and the dosage is very low on it. So it's kind of like not produced the way that a lot of your big houses are produced. So when they're producing for the United States, they always add a little more dosage. But when they're producing for France or if they're producing for Asia, they have a lower dosage level. But this one is very moderate, super like floral and soft in the nose, a little bit of berry, spectacular. A great entry level rosé as well. So if you're not brunch gathering is Ceres. Ceres is, is a brand out of South Africa and they have some of the best fresh juices. Um, it's a little more pricey, anywhere from $3.50 to maybe like $4.99 for a box. And I recommend the passion fruit because the passion fruit is a super tropical flavor and it's not OJ. So, you know, what other flavors do they have besides? They have peach, they have guava, they have mango, they have a couple different juice blends. They have, um, I forget the grape because it's not like a regular grape. It's a different grape that they use for it. But these are super nice for your mimosas. So, okay. I've never so, had a mimosa with any other orange juice, to be honest with you. <laughs> But I'm not a mimosa guy. I think guy, you're going to know. enjoy this. I have a so feeling. So you never need more than two ounces of juice for your mimosa. And it's really kind of a matter of what you're doing after your event. But so you do need two ounces to... of juice. So can you send that this way? Because I didn't get well, two I ounces of juice. I thought that, you know, <laughs> you would watch me make your mind and you would make a decision about how you'd like yours well, to Well, I'm going to do whatever you do. Okay, that's fine. How's that? Okay. That's, yeah, that's perfect. That's, look at that. Almost exact. Uh, whatever. Okay, you go. We'll splash more. Don't don't so, <laughs> don't worry about me. You go ahead and I'll just do whatever. So you go ahead and you fill with your champagne, and the amount of juice that you add to your beverage should depend on what you're doing afterwards. If you need to do something after your brunch, then I recommend maybe doing 50-50. Do half and half, and you know use a champagne that you're comfortable with or a prosecco that you're comfortable with because the idea is that. You're just having the best of both worlds. You should use a very good juice and you should use a very good wine because you're not necessarily looking to pass out or to have a hangover after brunch. You're just looking to have a good time. Speak for yourself. This guy over here. <laughs> this if I'm guy drinking the most, I need to pass out. So <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, I didn't have any other strong See, this is the situation that I have. People that know me treat me like shit. <laughs> Not at all. I know that George doesn't drink mimosas, so why am I making him one? She, or helping him make one? Right. So I'm just giving her a hard time. That's hilarious. She's absolutely correct. But I'm yeah, so this one has time. this one. This one's spectacular. So the Schramsberg is a great blanc de blanc to begin with in the first place. So you're not competing with flavors. The passion fruit actually complements it quite well. So you know, you end up with a nice something different. So, and you know how orange juice is really pulpy and it's immediately gonna fuzz over or fizz over in your glass. You don't have that problem when you're using other fresh juices. Yeah, I like this. This is actually, this is way better than an orange juice. Yeah! Because, maybe because I just have contempt for mimosa with orange juice. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> yeah. So mimosas with orange juice, or the traditional mimosa is, that's the mimosa. So if you order it, it's going to be champagne and orange juice. But if you order a poinsettia, a poinsettia is a champagne and cranberry juice cocktail. Of course, you have the cypress. The cypress is a grapefruit juice and champagne cocktail. And I think the other ones are just like play on words. So you get the palm mimosa and then you get the mango mosa, which is the mango mimosa. Okay, so, well, I mean, that's, you know, those are the yeah, easy ones. Right. But the poinsettia and the cypress are the two bigger names that you want to remember if you want to have something a little more special. The Bellini, which is the one that's made with the peach puree. And that's one that's more common at brunch restaurants. Yeah, but a lot of times, like, they'll have that on the menu, like Bellini. Yeah, you can get a Bellini. You, know, you don't need to necessarily order that, like, special. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll have it, or they're, they're waiting for you to order it when it's ready to go. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, whereas a grapefruit juice from also, you've got to have to tell specifically. Well, I mean, you Although can I'm definitely, I don't know that you can say that. the names at every place. Like, 
you can ask someone for a side price, but if they've never made it, they'll look at you sideways. Yeah. But like if you're in a restaurant that has tequila and they make palomas, then they can definitely make you a side price. Yeah. So if yeah. you came into a dinner restaurant and ordered a side price, <laughs> you might not get what you're expecting. You might not get what you're Yeah. Want. So just so. keep it simple, you know. Keep it to brunch. How assume about that? it's me and I'm dumb. <laughs> or you can just look at me and you know I'm dumb. Like then, assume that your you know. server is not going to bring you <laughs> what you ask for. Ask for a champagne and just figure the rest of your life out from there. Yeah, pro tip. I mean, you know, I'm not saying servers are, are not knowledgeable, but everyone has different levels of knowledge. Yeah. Especially about all these names. There's a lot of cocktails that are coming back uh, in the last 10 years That's that true. maybe have been gone from the from the landscape. And if you use the crazy name, you might not get what you're expecting. So Correct. Yeah. Correct. All right. You so know, we got know one your more. restaurant. Maybe oh, yeah. don't like, you know, don't go to don't go to someplace too new that has a name that's too new. <laughs> if you go somewhere that has like a nice French name that means something like, you know, bountiful table, yes, they might have a Cypress. Yeah, this is actually tasty. I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't mind drinking that if Brunch and I you still smell brunch, the champagne. <laughs> yeah. You still smell the champagne, but you also smell the freshness of the juice. <laughs> okay, so do we want to try one more? Let's try one more. Okay, well, we'll do it without the champagne. First. No problem. Or maybe we, oh, you know what? We'll just don't. Listen, yeah, I was going to say, like, you know, that's why this glass is empty anyway. Let's keep it pretty. Honestly, I feel like if they're serving you champagne and something known as an all purpose glass, um, <laughs> That's, you know, you can do whatever you want to with it. Add whatever juice you want. This is actually a red wine glass. You yeah. could actually consider this a red wine glass. So you could actually still get great nose on this glass, but you can use it as an all-purpose glass. But I mean, the all-purpose glass I'm talking about, you guys Shorter, know, yeah, is right. a shorter yeah, glass, sure. easily a water goblet. They're going to serve you your Pellegrino in it. So That's <laughs> very true. That is very, very true. All right, so I did not have time to find us any cream. The cassis are... I guess I, you don't want the cream one. You want the regular cassis. Yeah. But the uh, Chambord here makes a fantastic champagne cocktail. It can be well. done either way, depending on what restaurant you're in. I've seen it both, both ways. Um, you Creme know, de cassis is more normal because the cassis is it's a cheaper, little, first it's of cheaper, first of all. It's cheaper and it's not quite as sweet as Chambord. I think yeah. that the, the raspberry liqueur in the Chambord is a little bit sweeter. It's a... Um, it's a jammier flavor on the raspberry as opposed to like a cotton candy raspberry. So this one you probably need about an ounce on that one to make your champagne cocktail with this one. We used to make a champagne cocktail at the Morton's with the Chambord. And you'll give this one a tilt to the side when you pour your champagne just in case the sugar decides it wants to be super active and bubble over in your glass. But if not, you get almost the same rosé color that you would get from a rosé sparkling, so. Yeah, you definitely want to do, do not want to do this with a rosé wine or a very sweet wine. No, you so anytime really you're doing bad. mimosas, you definitely don't want to use anything too sweet because the sugar in the champagne and the sugar in the juice will, they'll fight each other and you'll just be drinking a sugary headache. And you see how the bubbles are a little bit, oh no, maybe you can't see it, I'm not sure. But the bubbles are a lot more prevalent, and that's because of the sugar that we've added to it. So you can see all the bubbles coming up in the glass. Yeah, it's kind of supercharging well. those bubbles. Yeah. And, and these ones good. have been up have been open a little bit too. Yeah, so like they've had really, a chance to kind yeah. of have a little oxygen to them. They're nice. Yeah, this this is too sweet. <laughs> this is not my bag. This is definitely a brunch cocktail. I, yeah, it's a brunch cocktail. That's what I would call the the, the Chambord. Top of the Mark has one of the, the best brunches San Francisco's ever known. You know, it may be the case, but I'll never know it. A brunch is a very delicate meal. Like when you wake up in the morning and like you know you're not gonna make it before the early bird special ends. Camille, you have to be prepared for lunch. Like you have to be prepared. Camille, but you have to understand you, something. I don't do breakfast. Like I That's do breakfast at three in the morning. Should be on your on your on your on your like, brunch should be in your repertoire because you're not a breakfast person. Because eggs are spectacular any time of the day. If you've ever had a French rolled omelet with some brie, some nice chives on there, it's a special occasion because you know eggs can be anything you need them to be. But that's why brunch is so amazing in America. It's like we do these fancy things with eggs, but we would never serve you an egg for dinner. But for lunch or breakfast, brunch, you've got this spectacular arrangement. I'm sorry, I don't stand online for food. 
I don't care what meal of the day it is. What does it have to do with anything? Okay, You listen, don't have to okay. stand in line for brunch. If yes, you're not, you do. If yes, you're you do. going to Instagram influencer brunch, there are plenty of places you can go and sit down okay. for brunch without Look, any of that. I live now on YouTube, unfortunately, and Instagram, but no. Okay, that's fair. I'm going to brunch. I'm either going to someone's house or more likely I'm going to a restaurant, which means I'm not going at all. Because I don't, I don't wait 45 minutes for any meal of the day. Sorry. Well, I mean, all you have to do is make a reservation if you don't want to work. Wait. Famous last words. Uh, listen, I've never... The only brunch that I've ever waited an hour for, that I will continue to wait an hour for, is the Wicked Spoon in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. At the Cosmopolitan? Cosmopolitan? Yes. Okay. It's a How shameless plug. How many glasses did you before you got here? It's a shameless <laughs> plug. But... That brunch is worth every penny you pay for it. You know, we are going to Vegas next uh, in two weeks. Then you need to go to the Wicked Spoon if you can stomach the wait. And it's only a wait if you don't get there early. And there's Bacchanal at the, um, Bacchanal is at the Bellagio. Okay. So those are two very good brunches. And at Bacchanal, they have amazing fresh seafood. They also have prime rib and champagne is better than the champagne they serve at the Cosmo. So, you know. Okay. All right. Well, that's probably 150 Brunch is ahead, a, $125, but okay. you're go. paying for the seafood. For the seafood. Yeah, yeah, of course. The yeah. seafood bar actually has snow crab, Dungeons crab, and lobster. Oh, that's great. So, it's like, you know, it's got yeah, the, three, yeah, the big yeah. three. So, when you go in, it's like, you know, if you're an amateur and you're going to brunch and the first thing you get is like something from the salad bar, please don't go to brunch. Just stay home. Well, don't go there. Don't spend $125 on don't salad. Go to, don't go to brunch That's if you're not is. going for the protein. The protein is where brunch is at. That's how you determine if it's a good brunch. Like the bone marrow at um, Wicked Spoon. Listen, who's Nobody. making bone marrow? Who's yeah. even making bone marrow for yeah. mass consumption? No one. Yeah. But their bone marrow is nice. It's tender. They even have a little toast on there for you. Come on. Okay. Well, it looks like I wasn't planning on doing a brunch episode, <laughs> but it looks but like I'm going to one. Episode. So there is going to be one. So we're going to go and do that. They also have wine lists at both of these two brunch places well, that of I mentioned in Las Vegas, and you could still have your red wine. I mean, if you're going to have a prime rib omelet, there's no reason why you can't have. A wait, little... wait, wait, hang on. Did you just say prime rib omelet? Oh, so you don't like brunch, though. So, that's what well, I'm saying. So, you know, I just... Um, now I do. Now I do. We're definitely going to do that. Oh, you'll be able to. No problem. Yeah. Um, and I'll shoot that as much as I can. Who knows how loud it's going to be over there. But, uh, okay, Camila, this has been enlightening, to say the least. But, really, folks, really and truly, you know, all this... $125 brunch aside, you can enjoy sparkling wine without breaking the bank. All you have to do is do a little research, check out some of our videos. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll continue to do more of this. You know, we got Valentine's Day coming up. You can certainly take these suggestions yeah. to Valentine's Day. I might do another one down the road. We'll see. And don't just drink champagne for holidays. Drink champagne every day. Yeah. Every um, day that you wake up is a day to celebrate. So. Camila does drink champagne a whole lot more than most folks, <laughs> which is a good thing. You know, again, you know, you pigeonhole stuff just because yeah. you're told that's not a good way to live your life. No. Experience everything. Um, so that's Camila, George, Wine by the Bay TV, and we'll see you again next time. See ya.